Hello, beautiful students. Welcome to another online class. Today, we shall be defining non-communicable diseases. We will look at the examples and nature of some non-communicable diseases. In the last class, we defined non-communicable diseases as diseases that cannot be spread or passed from one person to another. We looked at some examples of non-communicable diseases and some of these examples are cancer, hypertension, anemia, marasmus, dental caries, boils, and so on and so forth. But today, we shall be looking at the first four diseases. Red blood cells are responsible for transporting oxygen around the body to provide energy for your muscles and organs. Anemia is a condition that indicates there are not enough red blood cells in your circulation to transport sufficient amounts of oxygen to your body's tissues. Some of the most common symptoms of anemia include feeling extremely tired, difficulty concentrating and sleeping, restless legs, headaches, dizziness or fainting, paleness, and pica, a craving for non-food items like chewing ice or even eating dirt. Iron deficiency is thought to be the most common cause of anemia and is said to affect about 2 billion people worldwide. Certain diseases, treatments, and conditions can cause too few red blood cells to be produced or reduce the quality of the cells that are made. Many times, these problems are caused by a lack of usable iron. Iron is essential for the development of healthy, new red blood cells. Possible factors that may lead to iron deficiency anemia include inadequate dietary intake or poor absorption of iron. There are periods of life with high demands for iron, such as pregnancy and growth. Iron loss through blood, such as in heavy menstrual cycles and in gastrointestinal bleeding, are common causes for the development of iron deficiency anemia. Reducing the risk of anemia can lead to a better quality of life and better outcomes if you are pregnant, preparing for surgery, or coping with a chronic illness. However, if you have recently been diagnosed with iron deficiency anemia or just iron deficiency, there are many treatment options available. Your doctor is able to do blood tests to investigate whether and why you are anemic. If the tests reveal that you are anemic and iron deficient, you can help your body with smart nutrition, like eating iron-rich foods and cooking with an iron skillet. Iron supplements can also be helpful and are often your doctor's first recommendation. Following the instructions for taking these will help you avoid any gastrointestinal tract issues. If a faster response is needed or you are unable to tolerate iron pills, your doctor may recommend intravenous iron, which can provide a more rapid absorption of iron than what you can absorb from food or through oral supplementation and without many of the gastrointestinal side effects. One out of every two men and one out of every three women will be diagnosed with cancer. But despite those huge numbers, most individuals don't know what that really means. At the simplest level, cancer or cancer cells are cells that have lost the ability to follow the normal control that the body exerts on all cells. In our body, we have billions and billions of cells, and they have different functions. It's a very complicated process under incredibly phenomenal control. And if something goes wrong and that control is lost, and particular cells escape the normal control mechanisms, and they continue to grow, and they may spread, that's what we call cancer. Those cells together, we would call that a tumor. Specifically, cancer is a malignant tumor, and we call it malignant because not only can it invade into adjacent organs, but unfortunately a cancer can spread to other tissues, and that can be life-threatening. Cancer can actually occur anywhere in the body because there are cells everywhere in the body. In women, one of the most common cancers, of course, is breast cancer, and in men, prostate cancer. And in both men and women, lung cancer and colon cancer are common cancers. It's important to understand that the cancer that occurs in one individual is very different than the cancer that occurs in another, just like those individuals are different. So a lung tumor in one person will be very different from a lung tumor in another person. Once the diagnosis of cancer is made, of course, the next obvious question is what do you do? 
There are several things that are really relevant. The stage of the cancer, which is information about where is the cancer? Do you say it's a particular kind of cancer? How much cancer is present? Has it spread? Is it in lymph nodes? Has it spread to other organs of the body? Cancer treatment actually is very complex. And part of the reason is because cancer is this constellation of over 200 different diseases. They have common characteristics, but they're all very different from each other. In addition to that, the cancer itself is not homogeneous. There may be three or four or five or six different slight variations in the cancer cells that are there. People ask, why? Why does my cancer not go away? It shrunk by 70%. What's wrong with the other 30%? Well, it's probably a different subtype of that cancer, which is going to require a different kind of treatment. There are three primary therapies for cancer, surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. Surgery works by directly removing the tumor. The radiation therapy provides x-rays to kill individual cells, and the chemotherapy provides chemicals that can kill those individual cells. But they have side effects. Blood pressure is the force of your blood pushing against the walls of your arteries. Each time your heart beats, it pumps blood into the arteries. Your blood pressure is highest when your heart beats, pumping the blood. This is called systolic pressure. When your heart is at rest, between beats, your blood pressure falls. This is called diastolic pressure. Your blood pressure reading uses these two numbers. Usually the systolic number comes before or above the diastolic number. A reading of 119 over 79 or lower is normal blood pressure, 140 over 90 or higher is high blood pressure. Between 120 and 139 for the top number, or between 80 and 89 for the bottom number is called prehypertension. Prehypertension means you may end up with high blood pressure, unless you take steps to prevent it. High blood pressure usually has no symptoms, but it can cause serious problems such as stroke, heart failure, heart attack and kidney failure. You can control high blood pressure through healthy lifestyle habits and taking medicines, if needed. Quashi orker is a type of malnutrition, common in areas of drought and famine. Quashi orker is due to inadequate protein in the diet despite an adequate caloric intake. Symptoms may include irritability and fatigue followed by slowed growth, weight loss, muscle wasting, generalized swelling, skin changes, enlargement of the liver and abdomen, and weakening of the immune system, leading to frequent infections. Once quashi orker develops, some of the effects, such as short stature and intellectual disability, cannot be corrected. Quashi orker is caused by a diet low in protein. It can also arise due to infections, parasites, or other conditions that interfere with protein absorption from the gastrointestinal tract. It is most common in children living in areas hit by drought and famine, but it can be related to dietary changes due to milk allergies in infants, fad diets, poor nutritional education, or a chaotic home life. Quashi orker symptoms may develop slowly over time. Common symptoms include Abdominal swelling, distension, or bloating Diarrhea Enlarged liver Fatigue Frequent infections Generalized swelling Hair and nail changes, including brittle, reddish hair and ridged nails that are thin and soft Irritability Muscle wasting Skin changes including pigment loss, red or purple patches, peeling, cracking, skin sloughing, and the development of sores. Slowed growth leading to short stature. Weight loss. Common treatments for quashi orker include antibiotics to treat infections, gradual increases in dietary calories from carbohydrates, sugars and fats, gradual increases in dietary protein, Intravenous fluids to correct fluid and electrolyte imbalances. Lactase to assist in digestion of dairy products. Vitamin and mineral supplements to treat deficiencies.